Welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Terran versus Terran where we find ourselves in 2000 Atmos. Now, before you click away, because I know a lot of people aren't necessarily the biggest fans of TVT, I've heard that this particular game is a bit of a banger. So first off, in the top right hand corner of the map with the blue SCVs from South Korea, we have none other than Byun. And apparently the man we gotta be paying special attention to Oh, I guess I accidentally made a pun already. It's kind of hard to uh, to avoid those. Anyways, we're looking at Special's main command center. Apparently, from what I've heard, Special plays a bit of a funky Terran style in this match. So, we'll see. Obviously, the standard in this matchup is to go for the good old Marine Viking base unit composition. Then you go into the Raven, of course. You can go into Vikings to try and get that air superiority. And then eventually, you can sort of go into, like, Liberators and all the rest of it. But generally speaking, the early game of TBT, it's... It's very well figured out, and I've heard at the very least that apparently Special decides to mix it up. I guess we'll see. Anyways, so far, standard openers from the both of them. We've got double gases in the main base right now, and players are going to be opting to go for that command center on the low ground. Couple of Reapers coming up. Nothing out of the ordinary there. A little bit of a Reaper battle at the front. Looks like Bion managed to get the very first shot in. But since he has to go up and down those ledges, he's not going to be able to chase down that Reaper from Special. Special at this point scouted out the high ground. He saw the timing right there of the factory. He saw the Orbital Command too. So he knows everything that he needs to know at this stage in the game. A lot of Terran versus Terran is decided in the early game. One little slip up can easily cost you the match. Now Bjorn, okay, after going for a Hellion, decides to now go into a Widow Mine as well. Alrighty, I'm expecting then a, a Medivac drop as a follow-up too. Wouldn't be surprised at the very least if he's gonna try and send those cloak units, at the very least when they're burrowed, towards the other side of the map. Special in the meantime, opting to go for a starport right now and a tech lab right here on the barracks too. So, so far, nothing all too crazy. Ravens are obviously the main amazing unit in this matchup. Getting a Raven out is, uh, yeah, super important, especially in the earlier stages, just because it's got so much utility, but also in the mid-game and also in the late-game, honestly. We see a lot of late-game right now in Terran vs. Terran, where the guys are just trying to, you know, out-Raven the opponent. Basically, the amount of Ravens you want to have is your opponent's amount, plus one. Alright. Special apparently sacrificing it right there, trying to... Okay, well, that's, those grenades are not really working out in Special's favor. Now, you're not going to be able to out-Micro micro Jackson himself. Beyond, of course, with those amazing cheekbones and micro, that too. I'm trying to, uh, yeah, Special's trying to out micro, but yeah, didn't want it. Oh, okay, I thought he was gonna bring the Widow Mine, but I guess the Widow Mine is gonna be here for base defense. Reaper on the Watchtower does spot the Medivac. Beyond at this point spots that he's been spotted. A little bit of spotception going on, and he's gonna be able uh, to, well, I guess he's gonna be able to continue the journey if he wants to, but I thought he was gonna go back home. Anyhow, Special's already got himself a Cyclone out right now. Double lock-on is what you're ideally hoping for on that Medivac. But here's the Ravens coming up. <clears throat> Quick third gas, specifically because of those Ravens. Okay. Oh, the Reaper actually coming in from the site. Cheeky little move right there. By the Mexican Terran player, but... Not quite enough right there to finish it all off. Alrighty. Fourth gas coming up pretty quick right here for Special. As you can see on the other side of the map, it hasn't been acquired just yet. Standard 1-1 one, one, one right here from Bjorn. Just getting uh, a little bit of everything. Third command center is going to finish up a bit sooner here as well for special, so... He's definitely not going to have as many minerals coming in here for the time being. Alright, auto turret will be dropped. Oh, nice pickup right there. Bjorn saving that, despite the lock-on right there from special. Ooh, superhero death right here from one of the marines. You see that? Straight to the surface of 2000 Atmos. Bjorn has got himself a... Raven right now. Going around the right side of the map. Trying to go in for some harassment. There's the NGBay coming up here for special. I do have the right replay, right? I'm pretty sure I do. This is the only long game of TVT that these two have recently played, so... Maybe the NGBay is just for missile turrets? Because otherwise this doesn't really make as much sense. So, in the meantime, right now on the other side of the map, Bjorn is going to go straight into the Stimpak research. Fair enough. Third Command Center is coming up on the Third Command Center location too. So he's going to be the one who needs to get uh, yeah, a little bit active out on the map. Oh, okay, there we go. So Special is indeed going to be using that missile turret right now. 
to try and defend his bases, but also to zone away any cheeky Terran units that decide to be aggressive. Because he's hiding. Ooh, doesn't get scanned. He's hiding a starport over there at the bottom of the natural mineral line. Okay. I've seen a build like this a couple of times before. So Special is definitely fond of playing mech. This is like playing Sky Mech, right? So he's got... Okay, he's not going to go for a reactor right there on that second starport. He's just going to try and pump out as many Vikings as possible. I guess the idea being that you want to try and catch the opponent off guard before Stimpak finishes. Or at the very least before 1-1. One, one. I don't know if you can get there before Stimpak finishes. Because that's like half a minute away. Well, he's going to try and make a move for it right now. Okay, very nice Widowmine detonation right there for, uh, for Mr. Bjorn. A little bit sloppy for special. That really wasn't supposed to happen. Either way, yeah, he needs to go through these rocks. So he's going to be able to get himself the air superiority here very early on into the game. Bumping out three Vikings at once. Whereas Bjorn, well, he doesn't have the capacity right now to go out and do so. Then again, as long as Bjorn just sort of sits there, it's not like you can really go in there either, right? Anyways, drop right now in the back of the main base of the Terran player in red. And I love this little... This little this little groove out is what I wanted to say. This little move out, drop and move out in one word. Anyway, uh, this little move out right here from Bjorn at the same moment though, while 11 SCVs are being killed, there's also a push going on at the front. Ravens of Special, not quite in range right there with their auto turrets on the opponent's siege tanks. And... Yeah, as long as Bjorn has the center tower over here and he sees when the opponent is trying to make like a move on him, as long as he saves a scan or two, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's got three scans saved up. I don't think Special's really going to be able to make use of that air superiority at this stage in the game. Nah. Go, go, go. That sensor tower is actually absolute key. So beyond reading his opponent like a, like a book here. Otherwise, you're just kind of guessing and you're scanning over and over and over again. Not quite ideal. Okay, so despite the double starport opener right here from Special, it's not really working out for him. He's going to be forced to now retreat. That being said, obviously, his economy was quite good here early on. Okay, he decides to now go into a fusion core, as well as a third starport. Okay, so I expected him to just transition towards full mech from here. But rather than going full mech in a second factory with it, he's going for a third starport. So this is triple starport right here from special. Before he actually transitions towards an additional factory. He's pumping out only one siege tank at once, and normally those are like the key unit when you're playing mech in this matchup. I guess the fact that he's gone for a fusion core, and that scan right there from Bjorn is actually really critical, because he sees the fusion core. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sure to go for liberator range or anything along those lines yet. It has to be... Yeah, now double, double starport is dropped on the other side of the map too. It has to be a better cruiser transition. There we go. Double BC is coming up right now for the Terran player from Mexico, and I kind of love it. So, rather than playing that bio-based army, so what Bjorn is doing is super normal. This is what practically every Terran player under the sun does in this matchup. He decides to, uh, well, maybe under the sun is not the best analogy for gamers. <laughs> every every Terran player under the moon does, you know, the, the I guess they play at night or whatever, right? Anyways, he's gonna go for a very biological army-based composition and then try to now, I guess, catch up in the anti-air count by adding on late starports? I mean, they're pretty early, all things considered, but late compared to specials anyway. So, as long as you have your siege tanks out, and as long as you have a good amount of Vikings, it's really quite difficult to push into the opponent's base. Marines are obviously good, but... Okay, now we're gonna go into double armory, but maybe it's actually gonna be for air units primarily. Anyways, here's the battle cruisers. They're gonna be operational. Let's see what he's going to do with those. No way he's going to just jump those across. I can imagine he's probably going to use the tactical jump defensively. I would have liked this better for Special if he didn't lose 26 SCVs, but it's really hard, right? Like, since Mech is obviously a very immobile unit composition, at the very least compared to Bio, Bjorn is pretty much always going to be able to sneak Metavex and little groups of Marines. Oh my god, we're going to go proxy base? Really Special. Oh my god, well, you know what, Bjorn? Absolute legend that he is. Sends an SCV out over in that direction, realizing the situation that he's in. Honestly, Bjorn is reading his opponent brilliantly in this game. Fantastic movement by him, overall. Like, that Medivac drop 
when he first scouted out roughly what his opponent was going for, despite the fact that he didn't see the second starport, he still went for the missile, or sorry, the sensor tower right here at the front, and now that one marine scouting out the proxy expo. Anyways, the battle cruisers they've made their way towards the 12 o'clock position. They're gonna use, yeah, tactical jump defensively. Obviously, repair is not free. So, this is something to keep in mind, because every time you see those units jumping, yeah, sure, they don't die, which is the most important part, but it's not like repairing them back up to full is, you know, without any risk either. So, he is indeed prioritizing air upgrades. Look at that. So, we have double armory, but he's focusing on air upgrades primarily. So, no siege tank improvements or anything along those lines. I don't know if it's good, but I like it. I mean, there's no way you're going to break this. Like, at this point, Bjorn is certainly not going to be able to break this many siege tanks. You can't really go into, like, your mass, uh, like, what I called Raven production here either to try and go for disables. He can't really go into Liberators either to try and counter those siege tanks. The, oh my god, well, that choke point is very dangerous, Bjorn. Don't go there. All right, yeah, if he, uh, if he's not paying attention, if he's not careful, Bjorn might actually just get overwhelmed. Anyways, here's once again that bio army, though. Ay, 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 trying to deal as much damage as possible. SCVs pulled to the front to try and soak up all of that damage. Eventually, though, the army in blue is going to be able to claw their way through it. At the same point, special going in for a full counterattack. Losing a command center over here is not ideal, but once again, it's 20 additional SCVs. I mean, you don't really want to lose the command center, obviously. But he's dealing a lot of damage on the other side of the map in the meantime, too. Better crews at this point are going to be the main source of getting rid of those Marines. And at this point, it looks like the Marine count is indeed gone. Jimmy over there getting picked off. That means the Marauders and the Siege Tanks can be killed quite easily here by the BCs. The same point, though. Uh, these units are still dealing a lot of damage. Upgrades not quite done yet. Ship weapons level 1. Just completed here for special, so that I think is why he decided to fly away, even though he had the superior Viking count there for a while. Bio units here from Bjorn, I guess, together with a couple of siege tanks trying to retreat. But special, actually, I think. Hmm. Getting probably the better end of that trade as far as like army units go. But I'm not entirely sure about the economies, right? So Bjorn is still happily expanding, taking a, a full horizontal line right here. So grabbing every single base that's available to him right now, he's still keeping track of what the opponent is up to. Um, it's really the worker count that Bjorn's been harassing brilliantly. So 54 SCVs have been killed. Now Special has been making a ton of them. He's not even adding on a Banshee. Is that a misclick? Almost feels like a misclick. There's no way that's really going to work out. Once all of those units are fully upgraded though, Special's army is going to pack an absolute punch. So, Battle Cruisers, the way that they work is that every single missile they shoot, and they shoot very quickly, uh, it's gonna get, well, with plus one, plus one damage, with plus two, plus two damage, with plus three, plus three damage. So, essentially what it comes down to is that units that attack very quickly, like, for example, the Battle Cruiser, they benefit from those upgrades tremendously. Bjorn is going into 3-3 research right now for the Marines. Another very fast attacking unit, but even with full... You know, armor upgrades and with combat shields and all that, they still die pretty easily if the opponent has enough. Well, I guess even battle cruisers, although full battle cruiser is a little bit tricky. Siege tanks primarily is going to be their counter. Special though, not upgrading any of the siege tank attacks. So I'm not entirely sure how this dynamic is going to work out. I think ultimately the army here from Special will be stronger, but it's going to be a little while away until he's got all of those upgrades done. Bjorn, in the meantime... Oh, wow. One scouting SCV over here from Special. <laughs> Fidget spinning straight towards the service of 2000 Atmos. Anyways, yeah, not much you can really do. A couple of Yamato guns will be... Okay, coming up! Oh, God. Okay, he does manage to get on out of there. I love the Battle Cruiser playstyle, but... The Special is the Special... Or, sorry, the Standard is the Standard for a reason. Playing these special styles, in both senses of the word, um... It's uncommon for good reason. I think the main reason, though, at this point, is that there's a lot of bases out for the Terran player in blue. He can mine however much he likes, and there's not really a whole lot that special can do about it. Also, obviously, the more he expends, like, at this point, his army is essentially as big as it's gonna be. The more bases he takes, 
the thinner he will have to expand and, and uh, defend rather all of the different bases that he's got, right? Like, you gotta spread out your siege tank count, and at some point you might just accidentally have like 100 marines, maybe 50 marines right over here in a natural. If you try to defend all of the outer bases, that's usually an issue you, run, uh, you, you start running into. Anyways, special. Apparently happy with the army that he's got. He's got 31 Vikings and a couple of battle cruisers. Well, at this point, we're getting to the point where, yeah, Bjorn apparently can start one shot in those battle cruisers, despite their attack upgrades and their armor upgrades. It doesn't really matter all too much. Epic Viking battle happening right over here, though. One Thor helping out in the background. I think that guy was also responsible for taking care of that one Banshee. Okay, there we go. Some Yamato guns going down, trying to take care of everything. But that air superiority right now does become apparent here for special. Ugh. My god, an absolute bloodbath of Terran flyers going down here. Yeah, I, I guess special again, he won that fight, but does that win him the war? He's trying to make a move out. Now with most of the Vikings disappearing on the side of special, Liberators are gonna be coming out here for Bjorn. He's still making five Marines and five Marauders at once. And even though it's gonna be a bit of a bloodbath when he tries to break through this, I think he should be able to break through it eventually. Scan right there at the front will reveal the position of that siege tank that was a little further forward. I guess if Special can cut off this base, the expansion on the right side of the map should also go down. Wouldn't be surprised if Bjorn will make a beeline. Yeah, exactly. Straight toward the base over here. Makes a lot of sense. Special army uh, or the special uh, forces right here take a while to reposition. And apparently he doesn't want to overstay his welcome. That's one of the things we see all the time. And then at some point, just the Marines and the Marauders, they come in. Instead, he decides to now siege up right here in the middle of the map. If any of the blue units decide to get even remotely close, they will be picked off. Special is popping out a ridiculous amount of Vikings at once. He does have the upgrade lead in the air battles. Okay, Liberators are getting picked off. One shot, just like that. Okay, that Thor over there, a little too far forward, should be picked off. Nicely done. One tank over here from Bjorn left behind. This is one of the things he likes to do, but it's barely out of range. I think it will get popped. Battle cruisers here moving on over towards the right side, trying to get that base. SCV over here. My god, I just see units <laughs> flying to the surface almost. Can you fly on the water? Kind of. Eight Vikings at once. My god. Okay. So this is a full air mech army with siege tanks for support. Sky Terran, I guess is how we should refer to it. I'm a little concerned that at some point though, all of those tanks are going to be caught on sieged. And Bjorn just absolutely clears it up. I mean, obviously, that's what you're trying to avoid at all costs. Those two battle cruisers are actually putting in some work right now. They don't have a lot of kills, but they did get a command center just now. And now the SCVs are starting to get picked off, too. Bjorn also awkwardly trying to add on a couple of those Medivex into the mix, but I think he's only got, like, yeah, he's only got three. Tactical jump. Get out, get out, get out. Oh, he's decided to join right now with the main army, trying to catch some of those Terran units in blue off guard, and I love the move. Really liking the movement for Special in this game. Really liking the strategy. This is not something I've seen too often. At the very least, it's been a while. Now, I don't watch that many Terran versus Terran either, so, you know, maybe that's the problem, but... Anyhow, sick move. Really cool play. Yeah, Bjorn is slowly getting choked out in this game. We're nearly 20 minutes into it. And this seems to be the moment where special strategy really is starting to work out. Then again, getting his army back home is going to take a while. He doesn't have that many ground units. He's only got seven siege tanks. Now, there's only one siege tank right here for Bjorn, but he's still getting a lot of marines and marauders. I guess battle cruisers, dude. I would... Oh, my God. He doesn't know about the base in the top left. Oh, special. Special didn't realize that that base was already taken, too. He's probably thinking there's no way my opponent was that greedy, right? Otherwise, he definitely would have split... Probably the low HP battlecruiser to go after that expo right there in the top left. That's going to create a lifeline right now for Bjorn. Bjorn is moving aggressively on the map, which is why Special is slipping up. That's so many Vikings, though. The yeah, Marines on the ground, though, also helping out. One of the tanks not sieged up. Now the Marines are still going to start gunning down some of those Vikings, too. Vikings awkwardly have to move around here. One battlecruiser is going to be able to take care of... I think the majority of those buying units, yeah, with full upgrades there, they're not gonna go down easily. Okay, no, uh, no escape for those bad boys either. That moment when suddenly, like, 20 Vikings land right in front of your retreat path. Dude, he needs to take care of this base. Bjorn is playing very slippery, right? He's playing a very sneaky style of Terran. 
And since he is so active out on the map, Special hasn't really had the headroom, I guess, to check for that base in the top left. I mean, that was a very, very greedy base. Especially considering he took it together with the one right over here. And speaking of which, there's another expo right in that location. Oh, they almost turned uh, into next door neighbors too, with Special taking this base. <laughs> alright, alright. Special lets his foot off the gas for a little bit, and Bjorn immediately starts moving out once again. He's trying to... distract the opponent from ever going up north. Bjorn doesn't know if there's an expo in that location, but I guess it's safe to assume there isn't. A couple of Vikings now landed to try and go after that expansion, okay. I'm starting to be concerned, though, for the siege tank count. Like, special really... Like, I would have loved to see a second Viking. Or, sorry, a uh, second Viking. A second factory. Both starts with a, a v VF sound, I guess. Anyway, um... As a Dutchman, those are basically the same, okay? It took me years to get the hang of my Vs and my Fs. I still do it wrong all the time. You remember the hello, everyone? I used to revert to... Or refer to my video videos as well. It's it's not. Anyways, in the Netherlands we basically use the same pronunciation. Now this is a nice catch right here from Special. A little bit funky, but he's got the smart servo, so his units will be able to transform from ground to air a little bit quicker. Some very agile uh, Viking pilots inside of those ships. I'm assuming they're in a little cockpit, but I believe the description in Wings of Liberty campaign kind of reads as if the, the Viking pilot is also changing positions. Anyhow, this is a good amount of damage. Now he's finally found out about the base in the top left-hand corner. Special. Okay, manages to get out there once again. Vikings at this point, though, caught off guard there for a second because Special was so busy microing those units in the top left. Loses every single one of them except for this one. Okay, you gotta, you gotta keep one of them alive to tell the story. That was a very expensive set of units, though, for Special to lose. Mostly because, oh my god, 103 Vikings and 98 killed on the other end. Especially since they take a while to bring out, right? It's, it's not a unit that builds very quickly. I would have liked to see a second factory, though, so we could see some additional siege tank production. I guess Special has been busy spending all of his gas. Maybe him taking this expo would have been really nice in the chaos of that fight. Anyhow, he wants to go for the high yield gas. Siege tanks need to be in the right place here in order for him to be able to take this location. Okay, tanks now siege up. They only have plus one though against plus three armored uh, bio units here. Yeah, I guess battle cruisers make the most sense. He really wants to go for a planetary on this location. Problem is, if you put all of your eggs and all of your siege tanks in one basket, your third base is going to be very exposed. This is not really a base that's mining anymore, but it's still an important location for the Terran player in red. Just having control of that is super important. In the meantime, though, Vikings heading on over towards the top left and corner, and they're going to be able to take care of some of those SCVs in the top left. Denying that base, going after the starport, or sorry, the, the factory structure names. Apparently, they're not my strong suit today. Anyways, they're going to be able to go after the command center. There you go. Planetary Fortress, not done yet. Honestly, the siege tanks need to be a little bit further up north. Yeah. Bjorn doesn't really know, though, so he's got to be very careful. Now he's taking the bases in the bottom right. I love the movement here from Bjorn, though. Like, I like the army movement from Special a lot, but the way in which Bjorn is constantly expanding where his opponent isn't is fantastic. Really playing into the weakness of this Sky Terran army. That's a lot of dead SCVs, though. Yeah. Okay. A couple of Yamato guns, and then teleportation. Vikings dealing some more damage up north. Now that bio army though. Okay, so this is what I was trying to refer to earlier. If you're gonna try and expand all of the outer bases, you might just run into some issues over here. That being said, battle cruisers are ready to defend. Slowly, that battle cruiser count is growing. There's 300 gas each, so special can't really afford that many of them. That's probably also the reason why we haven't seen another factory, because you just simply can't afford making that many units at once. Another command center gets killed here by Bjorn, but again, this base at the 6 o'clock, it was already mined out. He's now going to try and take care of the bottom, or sorry, of the top left, while Bjorn is mining the bottom right. Uh, there's still quite a few SCVs remaining. He needs to move on over those uh, towards mineable locations. Okay, a couple of battle cruisers will go down, but it's at the cost right here of a ton of blue Vikings. 
Nice. <laughs> really? Really? That is thinking about starting off a command center right over there. Soon special is gonna be blocked when he tries to land that command center because command center pilots have hearts. They don't want to land on top of other units. Anyhow, the siege tanks have no such issues. All right, so this base was mined a little bit here by Bjorn earlier. Actually, for quite a while. Yeah, it's actually been quite a bit. Anyhow, gases now need to be acquired. That's the main limiting resource right here for Special's army. Bjorn has plenty of gas to spare, mostly because he's going for a lot more marines. Whew, all right. Looks like we're in the eye of the storm right now. We've had non-stop action the entire, well, last 20 minutes of this game. Now we have a bit of a moment to breathe. Special just found out about the base in the bottom right hand corner, so he now knows that that expo is taken by Bjorn. Bjorn can obviously go for this one as well in a little bit if he wants to. He's got another command center close by, but I guess for now he doesn't have enough SCVs to mine. Um, in the meantime, Special's doing the same thing, but all the way in the top left hand corner. Vikings moving on over in that direction. That is 17 versus 18. Vikings on the side of Special though, still a little bit better upgraded if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I well, never started up plus three armor. That's actually... Well, I guess it's too expensive. Yeah, he's already limited as far as the gas count goes. This is a high-yield refinery right over here. So this gas is going to be mining very quickly, but it's going to also mine out very quickly. Basically returning uh, twice as much as a regular gas geyser would, but obviously there's only one gas geyser in this base. Um, yeah, Bjorn actually never really mined these gases that much. So maybe getting a command center in that location is not a bad idea. Special instead, though. I don't know if he's the one that wants to put a... I think you actually might want to fly a command center over there for the gases at some point. Beyond trying to sneak out a Liberator. The air fleet from Special moving at the 6 o'clock position. God, this is a sick game. Like, Terran vs. Terran has a tendency to be quite lame. But it's also got so much potential. Like, it's one of the absolute coolest matchups in the game. When, you know, the game is cool, right? And that's not necessarily always the case. Okay, better cruisers. One of them did not manage to get out of there. They're going to be able to take care of that Liberator that's denying mining, though. Bio units once again on the ground, providing a lot of additional damage here. Special, you don't have the superior numbers. <laughs> All right, the Liberator in the top left was indeed cleaned out. Okay, Beyond going to go for one of the juicy bases. I don't think this expansion has actually been touched. No, full, uh, full resources right here. For the Terran player in blue, I mean, normally this is one of Special's expansions. Bjorn really is starting to catch a, uh, a wave over here, though, because his, his army is certainly much bigger. 134 supply for his only 81. Siege tanks coming down the ray. Oh, God, careful, careful, Special! You can't lose those units for free. He had no vision anymore of his own natural expo. The base at the 6 o'clock obviously was destroyed. The third base was destroyed too. So Special just took a chance and decided to roll those tanks down the ramp. And that may have actually just cost him a loss here. Because losing those tanks here, I think he really needed those. There's not that many units to now prevent that Marine Marauder army from actually getting in. He does still have some siege tanks over here, okay. They came in from the top left. Still though. Ugh. His entire production line is located in the main base, and with Bjorn picking off all of those structures, Special has no way of staying in the game. But that was an amazing game. Well played to both. 